Back with another video. I got a video here today of Tosi Gabbard, and she was on uh, Tucker Carlson's podcast. And she basically uh, let the cat out of the bag and informed everyone who really runs the government. So let's have a look, and then uh, we'll react to it like usual. Office right now, but they still continue to wield immense power in influencing the decisions that are being made. So can I just it's sort of sidebar, but I think relevant, interesting. Are you answering the question that everyone watching has, which is who is running the government at this point? It's obviously Biden. You, you think Hillary? I, I, there, it, it's not a, a leap of, of imagination to know that that's true when you look at the people who are in Joe Biden's administration. They are the, the, the people who were the right hands for the Obama administration, for President Obama, and for, for Hillary Clinton. Uh, when Hillary Clinton said herself the other day, she said, oh, yeah, I talk to the White House every day. So it's not it's no shock or surprise uh, who the influences are behind the policies that are coming out of this White House that many people say is the most radical and woke White House that our country oh. has ever seen. Oh, well, there's no question about it. So, but as this was happening to you, you don't want to go to the White House Correspondents Center, good for you. <laughs> Tiresome. But on the other hand, it is a lot easier and much more pleasant to be loved than it is to be hated. I mean, this is true. And so as you became like really hated by the leadership of the Democratic Party, and they weren't hiding it at all. No. Did you ever think like maybe it's just easier to kind of pretend bombing Syria is a good idea? Did you ever question your decision to say no? no? No, I, I knew what, that that would be true. I knew that there was certainly an easier path to take. Yeah, you think? <laughs> it was kind of laid out for me when I first got there. Uh, but I, I never second-guessed my decision, um, my decisions about these different positions that I took. Um, I never regretted them. Uh, never, not to this day. And I never will because I didn't go to Washington to be loved by the people who live and exist and thrive in that bubble. Well, sure, I get it. And their their love is not worth having. No. I totally agree. But their money's good. Yeah. And I think you're the only <laughs> famous person I've ever met who flies coach. Yeah. <laughs> and you're certainly the only very, very well-known member of Congress, former presidential candidate, I've ever met in my entire life who didn't cash in personally. And I know that is factually true. So, like, do you ever think, like, maybe, I don't know, it's easier to fight first class, maybe I should have just, it's not worth it. <laughs> okay. It's not worth it. <laughs> do you think it's weird that we never talk about the money involved? Like, I just know that from living there. Yeah. And from knowing a lot of well-known people who've, you know, become famous in politics. And there's not one of them. Not one, not literally not one on either side who's not in the top 1% for income, but you're not. No. Why doesn't anyone ever say that? Yeah, because because it is the assumed norm. It's not the exception. What they're doing is the norm. So why would they talk about it? There's nothing to talk about because they assume that every member of Congress, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, the day you walk out, you get your payday. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, very interesting. You know, when she was talking uh, there at the beginning about you know, uh, Obama and Hillary having a lot of influence, I think there's a lot of people who think that. Um, and a lot of those people did, you know, kind of go from you know, those administrations and now they're working for Joe Biden's administration. You know, Robert Kennedy's talked a lot about that as well. So, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of, I mean, this may be shocking to some people, but I mean, this is my first time seeing this and I was just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course they have a lot of influence. Of course, Hillary talks to the White House all the time. Um, I knew back in 2016 that the Democrats hated Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, it was probably about, I don't know, i say a month, maybe a little bit longer ago than that. I posted a video showing uh, Kamala Harris debating Tulsi Gabbard, and it, I mean, it was a nightmare for Tulsi. They hated her ever since because she was going against the Democratic establishment, which is now, you know, what that's that's just the normal way that the Democratic Party behaves now. It's, it's no, it's, it's, it's like they're not even hiding it anymore. Now, there still might be some people who are shocked by hearing that, you know, Hillary Clinton has... You know, influence that she talks to the White House every day, but it's really not that shocking. Um, you know, she's loved by the Democratic Party. Why? Because she's a warmonger and she wants to lock a bunch of people in prison and she, 
is very divisive. And this, and not to mention, her, her her and her husband's foundation literally sold weapons to terrorist groups. It was called the the Clinton Foundation. Uh, Donald Trump, in which donated millions of dollars to it. By the way, just so you let so you know about that as well. Um, you know, they used to be good friends. Trump also used to be a Democrat, right? And when you're a Democrat and you're giving money to Democrats, they like you. But as soon as you stop, they turn on you. Now, Tulsi wasn't giving money to the Democrats, but she was, you know, looked at as, you know, when she, a, a young, strong woman who could maybe be considered to be the first female president. But then when she started talking, it was made very clear to her that, hey, we don't, <laughs> we're not anti-war here. You can't say things like that, you know, uh, we're pro-establishment. You can't talk about anti-establishment. We don't care about the people. You do. That's not what we do here at the Democratic Party. It's not what they do in the Republican Party. So, well, the only party they really do that in is the Libertarian Party, but even then, they, they don't seem to be able to get any good candidates. And Dave Smith doesn't want to run, so I'm not sure what's really happening there. But, you know, going back to the Democrats, it's like, yeah, yeah, of course they don't like good people. They kicked out Tulsi Gabbard. Well, they didn't kick her out. She left, and then Robert Kennedy left. The two best candidates they've had since Robert Kennedy Sr. And that's what they do to them. They, oh, you're not fully establishment? Get out of here. You're not pro-war and, you know, all these other evil things. You're know, pro-lockdowns. They're pro, they're, they say that they're pro-choice, and they're really mad at the Republicans for not being pro-choice. But then during a certain pandemic, they show their true colors. We know they're not really pro-choice. They're just pandering to a certain uh, group of voters. That's all they're doing. I think most people here who watch my channel understand that both parties are pretty damn evil. But if you had to pick one right now, I'm, most most of you probably pick the Republicans like me. But since that's not the only options now, that's why someone like me is going for Robert Kennedy Jr. So, you know, in Tulsi, she's been saying this kind of stuff for you know, a while now. So I'm not exactly breaking any news. I just kind of saw this across my feed and thought, hey, this will be interesting to react to. And I do wonder what you guys think as well. So definitely let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps this channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back with another video.